So has anyone else hit like AI wonder numbness? And I don't mean that in a bad way, but there are times when something major drops and I'm like, yeah, okay. So that more or less happened when Adobe dropped generative fill into Photoshop. I couldn't help but think, well, yeah, that's cool that it's in Photoshop, but it's basically just out painting. Again, it is cool and I think it'll be a massive time saver. I was just sort of surprised at how kind of the world went bonkers about it. And listen, I don't want to pose myself as like the anti Adobe guy. I do use their products, uh, but I also tend to be the most critical of them. I love them. They hurt me. I punch back and then they release like text to edit in Premiere and I love them again. It's a dance that we do. But if you haven't had the chance to play with generative fill because you're not an Adobe subscriber, I do have good news for you. Stability.ai have released Clip Drop and within Clip Drop, there is a module called Uncrop that is basically Adobe Generative Fill. Now there are some limitations to Uncrop and I'm gonna go over those in a little bit because I actually have a solution to those limitations as well. In the meantime, let's take Uncrop against some of those, you know, kind of famous Generative Fills that were going around a little while ago. So a big one that was going around, of course, was Starry Night. Um, in the center frame there, you can see that's the original painting and the expanded border is is what Adobe's generative fill did. So now let's take it over to uncrop and see what kind of results we get. So we simply drop a picture of um, Starry Night in. You can see that we have the ability to expand our canvas here, uh, which we will do. Or I would say like a minute of processing time, probably just a little bit less. You're given four choices that you can choose from. Uh, and it looks like actually if you hit this forward button, it'll re-roll. Oh no, it didn't re-roll. It just kept generating. Wow, I'm, I did not know that. Um, so yeah, you have more choices apparently. Um, and then once you have something you like, you can thumbs up it and then download it. So yeah, pretty cool. Distracted Boyfriend was one that kind of cracked me up. Again, in that square, you can see the original image and outside of that is generative fill. By the way, did you guys know that there's a whole storyline attached to this photo? Yeah, it doesn't turn out so well for the distracted boyfriend. Okay, so bringing our image into Clip Drop, um, I've got it set up here. I'm gonna show you why I kind of bound the box this way in just a minute. So uh, we're gonna run this and see what we get. So after a bit, we ended up here, which looks pretty good. Um, actually, I'll give that a little thumbs up. But I will say that along the way, we ended up with some weird dumpster fires as well. So uh, it is stable diffusion. You're gonna get some weird stuff out of it. I like that. That's the balloon thing here and the cargo pants. It's yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, so a random logo here. Uh, so yeah, you, you kind of never know what you're gonna get. Now I'm also gonna show you why I went with this kind of one one aspect ratio uh, now. So if we give it a much smaller source image and kind of a wider area to cover, you do end up with some pretty funky results. So yeah, this is where you start to get into AI absurdity again. It's like the old days of just AI zaniness. Um, when it has too much to cover, it just goes crazy. Um, wow, that's terrifying. Look at that over there. Um, yeah, so there are limitations for sure. Is this a zombie apocalypse? What just happened here? Roll Safe, which is another favorite meme of mine, uh, gets us this in generative fill. So again, that white box is the original uh, meme, and then outside of that is generative fill. Clip Drop got us this. Um, that's kind of the closest that I could get that was pretty good. There's still some jank over here, but for the most part, I mean, there's some, there's some awfulness going on. That said, I think that the thing that you need to look at Clip Drop as is it, it does expand. Um, it's just, it's gonna take you a while to get there because, you know, stable diffusion gonna stable the diffusion. I will say, I do think that Clip Drop does pretty well when you feed it sort of mid journey images to begin with. Uh, like for example, this is one that I used in yesterday's video. Uh, that was a James Bondish figure. I just cropped that in, brought it over to Clip Drop and then expanded it out. And we got this image, uh, which is pretty solid. I mean, that's, very much in line with what we're looking for. Again, it, uh, around the edges, it just gets wonky. But for the most part, it generated a pretty solid usable extension. Uncrop is based in stable diffusion, which kind of makes for an interesting throwdown because it's basically stable diffusion versus Firefly. But because Clip Drop is stability, it kind of has me wondering if they're gonna connect their Deep Floyd model over to it at some point in time. And that might be really interesting. I actually haven't gotten a chance to play with Deep Floyd very much. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys have and what you think of it. Now, one thing that Adobe has going for it is the fill part of generative fill, which basically in painting. For that, I would actually take a look at Leonardo 
Leonardo.ai's Canvas feature. So I was just in Leonardo yesterday uh, via a project that I was working on via our Discord. Yes, we have a Discord. I'll talk about that in a minute. It's actually been a while since I've been here and they've done a lot of really cool improvements. So let me know if you guys want me to circle back and do a deep dive on Leonardo again. Notably though, we have AI Canvas over here, which is basically in an out painting. And just because I couldn't resist, uh, this is of course, Disaster Girl, my favorite meme of all time. Um, the box there is of course, once again, the original meme and the exterior is Adobe Generative Fill. So I took the original image, brought it over to Replicate, which we went over in a previous video. That basically gives you a text prompt, which is generally stable diffusion friendly. Running that prompt in Leonardo gets us this. It's not bad. Um, I couldn't really get it to finish off the girl's body. The plus side when you're working in Canvas is that once you get something like this, you can hit accept, and then you can continue on with the image, like building it out by hitting this mask button. We can kind of paint along here. Uh, I just wrote continue image, girl wearing soccer uniform. We hit generate, see what we come up with. And we get something like this, which actually looks pretty solid just along here. But what we can continue to do, masking out this part of it, continuing on with that image, putting whatever we want in there. So um, it's not as elegant a solution necessarily as Adobe's generative fill, but it does work. And I think it offers a little bit more flexibility and control as well. So taking this image, which I used in the Gen 2 tutorial, uh, if we wanted to put say James Bond behind there, again, all we have to do is draw a mask. And after some playing, we ended up here. I kind of got a James Bondy guy <coughs> in the background. One thing I'll say is that I think Leonardo has come a long way in terms of its prompting. Like this was just a handsome spy, James Bond leaning on a bar. And I got this. Um, there's some a little bit of stable diffusion craziness going on here. We've got fingers obviously. And then the weirdest glass I've ever seen. Um, looks kind of like it would be fun to drink out of though. There was this other one that came up that's technically wrong, but actually it ended up looking kind of cool. It's just kind of lurking there in the background. Um, again, that's something that I think that occasionally AI generators will do is that they will give you something that actually looks cool that you weren't actually asking for. <laughs> and if you weren't necessarily blown away by everything I showed you today, let's not forget that generative fill in Photoshop is not exactly perfect either. So this was perfect teeth. Um, let's take a look at how that comes out. Yeah, that's not really all that perfect. Um, the other options, um, perfect teeth, perfect teeth. But at least between ClipDrop and Leonardo.ai, you have two free-ish options in order to explore generative fill without having to pay Adobe. ClipDrop offers you a pretty good amount of free generations before they ask you to subscribe. And Leonardo gives you a 150 free credits a day, which is actually pretty generous. In channel news, I had a bit of a stress night last night. Uh, we're gonna talk about that in one second, but I did launch a Discord. It is very small and tied to the Patreon and YouTube memberships that I just started. You can hit the join button down there if you want, but it's a place that we can kind of hang out, learn from each other and get feedback on various projects and ideas that we're working on. In other words, it's not like Matt Wolf's Discord, which I love, but it's that's massive. That said, I started getting kind of stressed out and anxious last night about all of the things that I could do on the perks and providing value side of the Patreon and YouTube memberships. And I kind of realized that it was probably gonna stress me out so much that it might actually affect the content on just, you know, this channel, which is stupid, right? All of which is to say, I'd like to think of the Patreon and the channel memberships more as kind of just ways to support the channel as opposed to, you know, me providing massive perks, which I really don't have the bandwidth for, but you know, I hope to at some point in the future. And listen, if there's any reason that prevents you from joining the Discord through Patreon or YouTube memberships, just shoot me an email and I will put you in. No questions asked at all. Just write Discord in the subject line and yeah, I'll send you an invite. The whole idea of this is, you know, sharing information. So the last thing I wanna do is create a gate. So that's the spiel on that. Next week, I've got a look on how to become AI Hans Zimmer, even if you know nothing about music. I think that's gonna be a pretty fun one. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.